Hi, welcome to the Forks Drum Closet Podcast. I'm James. Hi, I'm Stanley Randolph, a.k.a. Barry White, a.k.a. <laughs> Stanley White. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marcus Finney. <laughs> <laughs> We are already having a good time today. Yeah. Man, Stanley, Marcus, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us today. Show, it's uh, bro. quite a quite a privilege on my part, I gotta oh, say. Man. You guys are both some of the most oh. uh some of the most phenomenal players I've ever seen. Oh, I love life. this room that you got us in, yeah. Yeah, shout out mm-hmm. to shout out to Polly at Blackbird Studios for Polly uh, Dope Room. Letting us hang out in uh control room F today. Control uh, room F. It's it's gorgeous in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost as gorgeous as both of your faces <laughs> on this fine day. <laughs> the, bit from, that, the bit that you can see. <laughs> the bit right. That you can see. Shout out to my face mask from 7 <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> I gave uh, Jeff Bezos a couple of dollars for this uh, one. So, mm. see? you know, you got to do what you got to do. You can use do. a few. Right. But, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. This has been quite the experience. I, I talked to your manager, Lauren, on Tuesday. Shout out, Lauren. What's up? I talked to her on Tuesday and. Uh, it was kind of a last minute thing getting you guys in here, but we're, we're super stoked to have you. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, you should know Stanley Randolph played with uh, Stevie Wonder, New Genesis, um, and I'm a, I'm a 90s baby. I was born uh. in, I was born in 93, so you know I know that you toured with New Kids on the Block. Yeah. Um, you did some stuff with Christina. Yeah. Aguilera, Backstreet Boys, of course. Yeah. Like, get it, man. <laughs> and uh, we got Marcus Finney here as well. I'm not going to leave him out. Um, both of you guys born in Memphis, by the way. Right. Oh man. Yeah. The things I've learned from this guy. <laughs> the things I have learned. Uh, Marcus, who's played with, you know, Michael McDonald. Uh, he's yeah. got, got several Grammys under the belt. Uh, Keb Mo, Taj Mahal. Um, and you just released, uh, uh, not not super recently, but you're live from Layman, correct? Correct, yeah. Man, so, go check it out. It's on YouTube, right? Yeah, it's on YouTube, Spotify, all that, all that good stuff. So. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I mentioned, so Mar- Marcus, you were born in Memphis, correct? Correct. Uh, Stanley, you're actually born in Nashville, correct? No, no, I was born in Memphis. Man, that's an internet lie. I saw. Like, really? Dude, multiple websites say that you're born in Nashville. We got to change that. That's crazy, <laughs> man. They, look, they have all types of stuff. It also says I'm a millionaire. On, <laughs> I'm still looking for the millions. <laughs> <laughs> They're somewhere. So, Marcus, you went to MTSU, correct? Yep. And Stanley, you went to University of Memphis. Yes, I went there, and I also actually. Well, I auditioned for MTSU, though. That was the first college I was going to try to go to. Oh, wow. mm. Yep. But went to the University of Memphis because it was closer to home. Closer to home. Yep. And I, I've read a little bit, and I've, I've heard you on other interviews and stuff like that. Um, yeah. You said uh, you were uh, – a lot A lot of guys are in show bands out there, but you were in more of a core-style band, right? In yeah. High, in high school, yeah. marching band. Yeah, we were studying DCI mm-hmm. all yeah. the time. Do, do you have a favorite core that you've watched? Or? Whew. Well, you know what? I love Madison Scouts. They're like, you know, it's like the classic. Right. You know? We used to, we used to get taught by this guy named Jim something. I'm trying to find him, actually. Mm. This guy who was really um, a part of my whole beginning and, like, learning rudiments and everything in high school. He was one of the first or second snare for Madison Scouts. Wow. And he wow. would come and teach us um, during the school year and also for summer drum line. So, now, were you at Kirby or Wooddale? I was at Kirby. Kirby, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was at Kirby. So I'm trying to find him. If you're out there, I know his name is Jim, and he was like, you know, a snare drummer for Madison Scouts. Hmm. I just want to see where, you know, see who we, you know, meet him again. Cause Jim, we're looking for you, bud. <laughs> we're looking for you, Jim. I've smoked so much weed, I forgot <laughs> things. I got to find you, Jim. Where are you? <laughs> uh, I also wanted to touch on... Th- I couldn't find it online, but did you do some stuff with uh, Three Six Mafia? Yeah, man. and Juicy J as well. Juicy J, Juicy oh, J. Oh man, that's a guilty pleasure. Of DJ mine. Paul, Crazy oh, Mike. I saw DJ Paul at uh, Marathon Music Works probably two, three years ago. Really? First time I'd ever seen him, man. Uh, it, DJ Paul's the coolest dude, man. He's he's a fucking away. rocker. I went to this after party afterwards, and I'm not usually one to go to after parties yeah. after after big shows like that. Yeah. And he was playing as well, and I I loved his performance, but. The thing that struck me the most was his hype man. His hype man was <laughs> killing it that night. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't realize someone could be so hype. Oh yeah, bro, they turned up, man. Hell yeah, for sure. Uh, so I do have a couple of questions made up here for you boys. Let's do um, it. For the both of you, um, I know you're both multifaceted uh, percussionist drummers. I know you're both, you know, multi-genre. You guys kind of transcend a few genres. I know uh, 
you know, Marcus, you, you dive into the jazz world mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and Stanley, you're more in the pop world. Mm-hmm. Were, were those like conscious choices to go into those realms or were, was it kind of where you felt like you fit the best or? I think curious? part of it is, is conscious, but it's also kind of like finding kind of finding your voice and uh and stanley also plays organ too you know? <laughs> i heard about this yeah yeah so like you know he i mean ah. to go down that road like talk about somebody being well versed you know and just music sings too go yeah. and sing something right quick Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm barry white aka <laughs> stanley white <laughs> yeah no, uh, but like, yeah, it was it was kind of it was part conscious and part kind of like you know this is this is somebody that called me to play this. Let me go and, and play that. Mm-hmm. Um, there does come a point though where you do kind of you you hear somebody play a particular style mm-hmm. the right way, mm-hmm. and then it kind of makes you go, okay, maybe not that. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> maybe I should go do something else. Right. So. That definitely happened to me when we first moved to L.A. When we first moved to LA, I saw this dude, Ronald Bruni. Everybody knows who <laughs> Ronald Bruni is. Yeah. yeah. I saw him, yo, and I ain't never seen a drummer like right. move that fast and just like, bro, he was a he he's a character, bro. He's yeah. like Ronald Bruni. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, no way I'm finna be competing with LA drummers that's doing that. No. Ronald, so, if you're out there, we'd love to have you as well. <laughs> Come on. Hey, Ronald would be a great guest on here. Drummer boy blue. You're right. So <laughs> I will, I went the other way. I was like, you, man, you, you got it. So, so it was more of like a conscious choice to go into the pop world, or it was well, yeah. Like, but like also, I was stu- I was studying a lot of pop drummers too, like mm-hmm. Brian Frazier. Mm-hmm. Like I was studying him big time, you know, just like you know, even like to the Christina thing. Mm-hmm. Like I never thought in a million years that I would get that call. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard also on a recent interview, Brian Frazier Moore was like one of the guys you hooked up with first out in LA. Yeah, mm-hmm. the first week. Um, moving to LA, man, he allowed me and my, my boys, New Genesis, we came and sat in their rehearsals, a few of them, and bro, my, my mind was blown because, you know, you you learn one thing here. Um, I was learning so much here in Memphis, but I was taught one way. And when I went to LA, it was I had the opportunity to see, you know, other guys who were super dope and professional do it a whole other way. So it opened my mind. It's like, well, it's, not, it's not only this way. You got this way and that way and that way. And it definitely seems like you made your own way. Yeah, for sure, man. It's like the sky's the limits out there. Because you're a young boy. Yeah, I am. To be exact, August 16th, 1984. Yeah, lady drummers, I am a young guy. Single. Young guy. Also on that day, Ghostbusters by Ray Park Jr. was the mm. number one song really? on the mm. Billboard Top Hits. Uh, wow. Mike, does that track still hold up to you? <laughs> still holds up? <laughs> yeah, man. You know what? That's an, Yo, that guy used to play for Steven, man. Ray Parker Jr. Yes. Yo. He's and bad. He's bad. He's bad, man. Yeah. Like, that record is taking him a long way. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like, that's an epic record. What, what are the odds, though, that it's gonna you know, be used that was every, number one the day you were year. born? I know. That's crazy. I didn't even know that. You just <laughs> told me so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wow. And I know, uh, Marcus, I follow you on Instagram as well, and I've heard you talk um, extensively about cooking yeah. as well. Uh, mm-hmm. So I don't want to dive too far into cooking, but what's like been your favorite oh, thing man. that you've made during this time? I know we've all got this extra uh, time at home. Two things, probably um, making carbonara Ooh. for the first time, and and it was something that I always stayed away from just because of the raw egg that you mix in with it. And mm. I've never been a runny yolk egg guy. Ooh, I've me tried, neither, bro. I've, I've tried like several times, me but neither. can't do it. And then the other thing was making um, these uh, New York strip steaks. Um, they were like huge. I got them from Costco. They were like two and a half inches thick and. <laughs> Seared them in a cast iron, so that's those are two of the things I've enjoyed making. <laughs> nice. Wow. So far. Do you cook at all, Sam? Look, I'm getting into it more now. Like I used to cook a lot all the time, but then touring so much, you get used to that catering. Uber Eats and catering. Yo, <laughs> you get used to it, man. Like so, and now I be in the studio a lot, so Uber Eats is my best friend. I'm like diamond on Uber Eats because <laughs> I've ordered so much food out there for like me and guests, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, but I'm getting back into cooking now, especially with um, the quarantine. So I've had time to be at home more, to just sure. like you know, chill, you know, not always in work mode. 
And I mean, especially uh, I see your wake and bake posts all the time. Oh man, <laughs> um, I was I was gonna ask you if you if you if you do bake. Oh, okay. Well, you talking about that bake? <laughs> <laughs> you talking about that bake? <laughs> well, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't think we're on the same. I don't think we're on the same song. <laughs> <laughs> so that baking. Um, actually, I've never tried it, but I have friends, yo, who do it and they do it well. So, yeah. We all, we all need some baker friends. Yeah. 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 I, I have some baker friends out here too. You know, if you guys want some baking. <laughs> if you want some bacon, I got to make it. Oh, man. For <laughs> sure. Um, another question I had was, uh, you know, I see the list of artists you play with. It doesn't al- always include, like, the top of the top. You know, I see you work with a lot of independent artists. Yeah. Um, uh, Lynn F- F- Fidmont? Fidmont? Yeah, Lynn. Fidmont. You know about Lynn? I listen to some of her tracks, and, Dope. man, it's, it's so tight. It's so pocket. Like, it, did it, I, it kills me, man. I worked with Lynn. I don't think I did any of her stuff though. Oh, okay. But I did work with her recently. Um, uh, everybody knows the bass player, the bait the bass player for um, Stevie Nate Watts. Mm-hmm. He's doing um, an album, and I've been helping him out on that. But he's got a lot of great Ray Parker's on there. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of great people on on that album. You know, like like it's gonna be pretty cool. Like a lot of heavy hitters too. Hell yeah. So like, um, Lynn is singing background. I think on a few songs on that joint. So I recently worked with her in the, in the studio for Nate. And then uh, Tasha Taylor as well. Tasha Taylor. Oh, Tasha Taylor. I worked, yeah. That's through Nate, uh, too. Honey right? for Biscuit. <laughs> yeah, that's through Nate, too, yeah. Um, my, I guess my, this is all leads to a question, is like, what what makes you want to work with a certain kind of artist? Um, Recently, like, I've been working with younger artists, man. I like um to be a part of the new generation, you know? Mm. Um, because they got a lot of great ideas, man, and they're fresh and they're new, and... and there's some people for me there's always been something about a person who didn't grow up as musically inclined as I was you know that kind of just like started and they hear music so different and my technical mind wants to tell me like no that's not right it's not. but Isaac Hayes I, I remember what he told me he was like yo f- find the love in everything you know like when people create they're creating from whatever they have within and it might not make sense to everyone, but to some, it is going to make sense. So, like, I, I try to find a love in all genres, all generations, like, all of it. Because mm-hmm. it's, like, it was created for a reason, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So, like, it was created from an emotion or a feeling or something. So, like, I, I give give all music a chance. It's, it's someone's story that has to be spoken. Yeah, exactly. And that's how they decided to tell it. So, like, I try to respect all of that. You know, I don't always like everything, but, you know. I find something I do, you know, I vibe with. I was gonna ask if there's anything fresh coming up that you you would like to tell people to listen to. Maybe well, it doesn't get the quite quite the, the new artists I've been working with so far. Um, Emmy Seacrest, like we just put out her music a couple, like almost a month, maybe two months ago, and um, we hit number three on the charts for mm-hmm. R and B charts for her her album. So that was dope. That Congratulations, was cool. nice. And um, so I got more stuff for her coming out. Um, I'm working with this new girl group called God. <laughs> For real, it's going to be cool. Just spelled G-O-D? Or? No, we, they changed the name. It's G-A-W-D, mm-hmm. and it stands for, like, good-ass women deserve. Mm-hmm. But it's some cool, vibey, vibey music. Like, I created it. You know, we kind of went out to the desert, yo, and had a shroom trip, you know. <laughs> Got elevated, had some fun, had a pool and the stars and the trees. Man. And just vibed out, yo. And we brought a laptop and some stuff and some mics and Brandon brought his bass, yo. We just, I was like, it wasn't the focus to go create. We kind of just wanted to go chill and relax, but it turned into some creative. Uh, when the spirit hits you, man. You yeah. know, and it's really, it's, it's really, it's different. It's cool. It's dope. So especially for me, like for me to create it and, and to be in that vibe too. So mm. it's dope. But that's a new thing. And um, man, I got some other artists too. They're young and man, fresh, like. Paul Leos, uh, Rambo K, and then there's these twins, man. They call themselves the the twins. I, I think so. They're still figuring out that name. But these twins that uh, my friend uh, Chris, Chris Bush, he's from Mississippi. He lives in L.A. now. And um, he found these twins out of uh, Texas, out of Houston. And they're really, really, really dope, man, really interesting. And 
I don't remember the last set of twins in the music industry, you know what I'm saying, for a mm. while since like Jagged Edge or sure. Ying Yang Twins or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think it's going to be cool just like, you know, on the marketing side, dealing with them is, is going to be dope. It's going to be interesting. You That's know? awesome. So, yeah, I got a lot of cool stuff coming out. And it's all not, it's all not like funk drumming stuff, you know, mm. it's like some other stuff mm-hmm. is like trap music. Would you say you produce more now or play more? Oh, I produce stuff? more than ever now, bro. Like, I love it. It's, it's, um, I've always been on that vibe anyway, man. Just like after really st- studying Stevie's album, like when we did the Songs of the Key of Life mm-hmm. tour, you know what I'm saying? After really, really studying that, yo, and trying to mimic certain vibes, it just like really opened up my mind with the whole producing thing and wanting to uh, create, you know? So uh, I've been doing it, like I've always had a studio since I moved to LA, but like I wasn't really in it, in it, you know? But now I'm like in it. It's like, it's a better time to do it right now. Man. So, yeah. I was I was going to ask, uh, you moved to L.A. in the early 2000s? 2007. <laughs> 2007, January 5th. Man, it's a, it seems like a, a lifetime ago. <laughs> yo, he was there. You was here. Was I was here. He was, yo, he was with us when we first went to L.A., I believe, right? Mm-hmm. And we went to the BET show and all that. <laughs> Yo, he was there because we were we were going we all went to the same church, mm. Olivet, mm-hmm. and we were actually coming out here to visit to go to another church. Yo, we were out here, and I think we all went to this um, club called Harvells in Santa Monica, and we saw Jerry Brown, Victor Wooden, um, it was a few other guys, but it was like guys we looked up to when we first came out here to visit, and we saw those oh. Rest in peace. What's his name? Ricky Lawson. Rest in peace. We saw Ricky Lawson, man. And um, at this club, it was right next to our hotel in Santa Monica. We randomly just went out. We saw them. Uh, we were underage. We had to really, like, you know, <laughs> talk to the bar. It was, no, the security guy. The bouncer, you know. The bouncer, say, hey, you, know, hey, you know. We told him, like, bro, we don't want to drink. We don't do nothing, man. Like, these are legends in here. And they're just, like, in a small-ass club chilling. Like, we we got to go in there. So we paid our way in. He let us in. Yeah, we met these guys. They was like, "Do you want to play?" We was like, "Yeah." Mm-hmm. He was like, "Man, you got equipment." So we ran back to the hotel. Yo, got our equipment and ran back, and they let us play. Um, I forgot what song it was. Chicken. That's what it was. The chicken. They let us play that. Were you and you were with them through all this, Mark? Well, like there was one time I know when I came to Memphis before they moved out there. Mm-hmm. They were playing Isaac Hayes restaurant <clears throat> yeah. and um and they had just played a few songs and then they took a break we go back to the green room we're back there like clowning and then they come back out and brandon um said you know why don't you sit in and play the same song chicken mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I, I get up on stage and i look out in the audience and i see isaac hayes sitting there mm-hmm. and that didn't bother me it was who was sitting next to him but that was what bothered me is the fact it was Steve Jordan that's right. <laughs> sitting next to him. And I was like, that's right. Ah, ah, okay, great. Thanks. Um, but <laughs> that's right. But yeah. Um, and then I know at one point I was trying to convince them before they did the L.A. thing to come out here to Nashville. And because uh, mm-hmm. I was like, man, we need more culture in Nashville, mm-hmm. you know, and, and like y'all would do well. But clearly they went to L.A. and did even better. <laughs> and And like. Seriously, and like, and been killing it out there since. I mean, in LA, friends of mine, like, uh, friends of ours, like Donald Hayes, he would say, mm-hmm. like, you know, more and more Memphis musicians move out there and they just take off when they get out there. And, you know, these guys are definitely proof of it. Um, what, what would you think that, because I know of so many brilliant musicians that come out of Memphis specifically, mm-hmm. is there some sort of catalyst there, you think, that, <laughs> that prompts, that prompts such talent or? Hmm. Man, it's just the culture, man. Yeah. Hit musicians and hit songs have been coming out of Memphis since, what, the 50s and 60s? Mm-hmm. It's just there. It's in the water. So, you know, if you grow up there, man, you know, it's in the food. In the church. It's in the church. You know, it's in the schools. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all of it. It's all just a part of big, bro. Yeah. You know, just like other other places have the same vibe. Like, I right. love Philly drummers, man. Mm-hmm. I really do, bro. They have, like, a certain finesse when they play. Like, mm-hmm. And but it's just culture. Sometimes you can't even teach it. You just gotta, 
you grew up in it. Yeah. That, that's you interesting, know? like the, the regional aspects of yeah, it. Yeah, for that's sure. Like Chicago, Chicago, Chicago yeah. yeah, Detroit, Houston. You know what I'm saying? They all have a sound. They all have a vibe, yo. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's crazy and amazing how, like, people, even people come to L.A. is like a melting pot, bro, and all these different styles, bro, and people just end up working with certain artists, and their vibe and their style fits perfectly with mm-hmm. their artists, you know? Like, Or they know how to make it theirs, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So you could be like, oh, you got this, you know, working with, like one of my one of my favorite drummers is, is this young homie named Rico. He plays with Kendrick Lamar. Mm. Like he's a Chicago drummer, and Kendrick Lamar is really like a he's a L.A. artist. You know what I'm saying? But the way that Rico approaches that gig, what's, what's Rico's last name? Oh. <laughs> has, has he? I feel like I know a Rico that you do know comes Rico in, comes in the shop. Right. I think his Rico. His last name is Wright. I think so. Rico Wright. I'm stones. I could be, wrong. <laughs> but I believe so. But he plays with Kendrick Lamar. You're like, you come on, you know who that is. Mm-hmm. So you can definitely figure out who he is, find him. But yeah, he's like an amazing drummer, you know. And he approached that whole gig of whole and his homies. Like his homies are from Chicago too. They play with him on guitar and bass. And so the way they approach that gig is crazy dope. But that's an LA vibe though. You know, it's Kendrick Lamar. For sure. You know what I'm saying? But, now that same thing I can say about Stanley moving out bringing that Memphis vibe yeah. to Stevie's gig. Now, while they were in Memphis, we used to do these jams, and they would, I don't think there's a single James Brown or Stevie Wonder song that they don't know, <laughs> Hon- honestly. Like, they would literally play through these songs and pick out all the nuances. Oh, man. You know, like um, this one James Brown song where he um, sings this run, I forget, forget what song it is, but. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, um, uh, it's the song that the famous James Brown song. Brandon definitely knows. Yay! He does this long run, and they would pick that out. And then the Stevie stuff, all the grooves and all of the space in between, everything, the breaths, like they knew um, where all that stuff lies. So, like he was saying, like you hear that stuff and you start thinking about it uh, in detail, mm-hmm. it opens your mind up. And so he brought that Memphis thing and owned it. Playing Stevie's thing, which mm-hmm. why it feels, you know, like home. Feel, feels like <laughs> home. Feels and, like home. Yeah, fresh and like home, modern and like <laughs> hidden, you know, for sure. And yeah, I man. and I also love your interpretation of a lot of because uh, because Stevie played on mostly everything. Yeah, bro. And you know, I watched your uh, Grooving in Memphis, where you kind of emulated how he played, uh-huh. and I, I I thought that was phenomenal. bro. And that came from me like the main rule that Nate Watts told me when I got the gig was just watch Stevie, just watch him, you know? Because he has certain mannerisms and certain things he do that you can just know where he's finna go or know what he's finna do. Just from watching him for so long and being in his studio, that's another thing that, that helped me too, man, like with my sound, like being there in the studio on the actual drums, mm. you know what I'm saying? The head's not changed <laughs> since back then. Right. So it sounds like the record, like just touching that, bro. Mm. It opened my mind. I'm like, man, oh, you could do this whole vibe. No bottom heads, just like bigger toms, and because he was, you know, he was this guy was blind, bro. So like the way he, that he had his kids set up and the way that they had it, bro, was impressive. Mm-hmm. Oh, my next question was, is he really blind? Yeah, he's blind. <laughs> he's blind, bro. I've seen Wait. some. I've seen some stuff online. You know, there's all kinds of stuff. Out I there, know. <laughs> you, got Q, you got some QAnon. Some uh, QAnon. I had to sign an NDA. I had to sign it. No, but no, he's he's no he's blind for sure bro yeah well, that doesn't stop him though man no it doesn't yeah bro it doesn't stop him at all not at all i was gonna ask you guys there's been a quite the surge of superhero themed pop culture over the last few decades okay. except decade, you know starting with comic books start and then leading into these huge big budget movies we have these days mm-hmm. which they spend so much money making it's insane um i was gonna ask if either of you had superpowers what would it be? Oh man! Able, and then B, would you be a villain or a hero? I'm gonna let him go first. Man, see, <laughs> I get asked this question all the time, bro, and I can never decide, man. I feel like is flying really a power? Is it, I feel yeah. like I feel like flying. It it. it I always wondered about that too, because like, what is their propulsion system? Like, like, you know what like I'm are they using their mind to lift their body and fly, kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, like, what is it like? Mm-hmm. Atom manipulation, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just make some shit up, <laughs> right? Right. I don't know, man. I like. I, I would either want to fly, or be invisible. Mm. 
Like for real. And would you want to be a villain or a superhero? Oh, see, it's hard. I, man, have you seen The Boys? Oh, uh, okay. We're on season two right now. <laughs> so, so all I'm gonna say is, you can be both. Exactly. You are both. Exactly. Like, um, yeah. I mean, now, see, that's a good answer. I like that right. answer. I mean, because villains are the heroes of their own stories. Exactly. Right. Right. So. right. It's like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm. You know. Um, I think I would have like lightning. Lightning. Ooh. Yeah. Just because like. I could fly if I wanted to, super fast, and right. shock, like a, what, shock what's her name on the boys? Lightning is all of yes, her star front. But I wouldn't be a supremacist like she was. Oh, uh, understood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was wild, dude. That was that really was wild. Have you watched that show? I haven't. Oh, don't, the man. boys? Don't, don't, don't. You gonna go down? What is, that is hole, it on man. Netflix? It's, it's on, on Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah, it's great though. It, it kind of delves into the corporate aspect of what superheroes would be like mm. in modern culture. I also heard about this new show called Love. Craft or love, I don't know. Oh yeah, it's HP Lovecraft's like horror show. Yeah, oh, they HBO. said it's okay. Oh, I'm gonna check that out. So like it? something with superpowers and stuff. I'm not sure. Uh, I th- it's set in like Amazon or uh, I think it's on HBO. HBO. Oh, yeah, I got you, got you. Yeah, man, I just watched that uh, Haunting of Bly Manor. I don't know if you guys. I've heard seen it before. It. Yeah, I've seen some of it. I didn't want to finish the whole thing. I love scary stuff. I, I do, do too, bro. Yeah, it's so much. Fun. I love scary movies. Mm-hmm. So, oh, you guys have probably seen then. Uh, what is it? Um. Get out, of course. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that, what's the other one? Exactly. He did, he did the. He's doing the uh, Jordan mm-hmm. Peele. He's the one doing the Lovecraft. Yeah. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. And if you haven't watched the new Twilight Zone with him, I haven't. It is phenomenal. Oh, it's good. It's so good. Oh, I gotta God. check it out. He's, he's like, go for it. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I really appreciate you guys being here. For sure. You know, we, we, won't, we won't keep you guys too long. We'll probably get some barbecue here in a little bit. Oh and, yeah, we'll <laughs> smash it. Um, although I did have did have one more question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Recently, uh, scientists have discovered this this gas called phosphine, phosphine. in the atmosphere of Venus. Hmm. Um, and phosphine is strange because it can really only be produced by bi- biological life, Where is as, going? as we know it. So, so, so they're they're thinking that biological life could possibly exist on Venus at hmm. this point. My question is, how do you think humans would react to the fact that maybe they're could be intelligent life out there like if it was if everyone found out that there was intelligent life off of earth you know somewhere out in the cosmos bro i believe it is already out yeah there. right you know but it's like, been out there it's been yeah. out there but yeah. but but say like everyone was forced to accept it immediately well no you can't force it i don't think I, true I, I really i really do want a spaceship to come out of the sky <laughs> yeah i'm waiting on it i mean elon, i'm ready for it elon is making it <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm ready for it man. <laughs> he because he did that with yeah, that the, lunch, with the, the launch, and it came everything back. came apart, and it oh, really man. looked like it was something spect. You know, and then mm-hmm. the rockets land themselves. Yeah, too. they land themselves. They come back. Yeah, he's launching that whole Starlink thing right now. See, he's what's, put, the, what's the movie with Jodie Foster and um, Jason? I'm um, a uh, Matt Matt uh, Damon, where they had the pl- it was two planets. And Earth basically, like, if you were rich, you could afford oh, Elysium. Yes. Elysium. 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 Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. That was crazy. That's, I wouldn't be surprised if that's where we're headed. Right. But, uh, but yeah. yeah, the whole, like, other life beings out there, I mean, be naive. Yeah, we be naive. I mean, we have, yeah, I would even yeah. say we got, <laughs> we, probably, we probably got some living here right now. How they are here, bro? Just out, dude. And they're gonna be out on Halloween, <laughs> just out in the open <laughs> with no costume on. But you gonna think it's a costume? But no, nah, that joint gonna be just right there in your face. Boom! I think there might be some here in Nashville today. Yeah. For the debate tonight, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> there it is! There it is! There it is! I don't know. <laughs> we shall see. If, they, if they've been out there this whole time, it's like, yeah, throw, throw some bone. Like, oh, bro, they've been out there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, you know, I wish they would um tell me. Yeah, you can tell me. <laughs> right. For real, I'm not gonna judge you or say anything. <laughs> I just want to know. Show me something magical, man. Yeah, yeah. That's all I want to see. I feel like if anyone would know, it'd be Will Smith and Tommy Lee. I was Jones. about to say Men in oh, Black. Man. They, they, they got to know. <laughs> Unless they've been they've been uh, flashing, 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 right. flashing. Every time you look at your black mirror, yeah, yeah. Look, every time you look real. at your black mirror, you get flashed. Which is an amazing show, by the way. Yes, I love is. that no. show. The first episode. If you can get past oh. the first episode, just trust me, it gets better. It gets amazing. But that first episode is like, I was like, do I really want to watch this shit? Like, Yo. this is gross. Oh, man. And then after that, I was like paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> after that. It really makes you like ask yourself some crazy questions. Yo, like, for real. morally. Well, morally, go, right? Go watch Social Dilemma and then go back and watch Black Mirror. Yeah. 
See if they don't mess you up. Oh, so man. Good too. <laughs> you saw the that Miley Cyrus episode of uh, yes. Black yes. Mirror? That was insane. So I saw yes. all Black Mirror. Yes. <laughs> We're waiting Twice. on your new season, by the way. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Please give Please it to us soon. It, man. You oh, guys man. know how to tell the future a little bit. So. Yeah. We need some insight. I mean, at this point, y'all can film it all on your phone, right. Individually and piece that stuff together, right? Right. SNL did that. Like they did a, mm -hmm. they did like a live broadcast SNL, which is it almost worked. Insane. It did almost work. <laughs> They're back. Right. They're back. Finally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our our boy uh, Dari Jones. Mm -hmm. Dari SNL. Slated, we did a, man. Did a podcast with him a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, that'll be coming out here shortly. Nice. Um, nice. Nice. But yeah, him and Jack White up there. That's another. He's a funky movie. That's yeah. another like yeah. like genre crossing guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, because of course he's you know gospel fusion jazz oriented, mm -hmm. but then he goes and plays with Jack White in a rock band. And yeah. And, and he just brings his style to yep. that to that. And it's and his setup, man. I'm about to say his setup is the hashtag nobody can sit in. Setup. Like for real, I, <laughs> man. But I I kind of played on it a little bit before. It's slick, comfortable, dope, man. You know what it's like? It reminds me of the like, remember when Will Kennedy had that mm -hmm. frame that would have you sitting back sitting like back, that yeah. and just like relaxing. Yeah, it's kind of like you just you know, yeah. Because yeah. he's he's a taller guy too. He's tall. He's taller than me for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it, it reminds me of that kind of. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he put it on a frame. I think that would be make it even doper. Right. I just love the fact that too he stands up and he's so animated when he plays. Yeah. Know? It's like now nah, you gonna see me. Yeah. Like because he's super quiet, super quiet in person, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But when he plays, man, it's like stands up and like, but everything he's playing matters. Yeah, it matters for sure. He meant it. Yeah. We got a we got a nice peek behind the veil on the last podcast. Yeah. He's a he's a, he's a very animated man. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, once we got once we got some uh, got him going. Got some alcohol in. What him? kind of cookies did we? <laughs> <get>? <laughs> he don't even drink. <laughs> uh, Lynn, and Lynn and Larry's cookies. He oh, he loves them. So oh, you got him some cookies. Did Stanley bring? Them? Oh yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I want some cookies. <laughs> Where are the cookies? Are they lemon flavored? Uh, what did he? I think he got the chocolate chip ones. Uh, you man. like lemon cookies though? I do though. Oh man! Uh, I like lemon school. cookies. I know that. Lemon cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Memphis lemon cookies. Hey girl, come get you a lemon cookie. Come get you a lemon cookie, girl. No, lemon cookies, lemon cake, and lemon. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, lemon filled donuts. Mm. Oh yeah, I do that. Solid. Yeah, those are solid too. Yeah. Well, guys, I really appreciate you guys being here. This show, sure, man, this has been awesome, bro. Quite the experience. Yeah. Marcus Stanley. Dude. Um, awesome. You guys should go check them out. You can follow Stanley at uh, Stanley Randolph. Stanley R. Randolph. Stanley R. Randolph. There's a few My other apologies. pages out there, you know. People are making fake Hi, pages. You know. <laughs> Fan pages, You're too. a popular man, but they don't have the little blue icon, do they? No, no. I don't have it either. Well, what? Instagram. Instagram? Hey. Come on. You know, How is he I, not verified? I don't, <laughs> right? I don't know, bro. They said I didn't have enough writer. I don't know, bro. Who knows? We'll oh, see. Man. We're you, working on it, though. Yeah. And you can follow Marcus at Sticks Finney. Yes. Sticks with an X, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. F-I-N-N-I-E. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My man. Not a Y. <laughs> Please. I-E. <laughs> well, it's been another episode of the podcast. Uh, again, you can find us on Spotify, uh, anywhere you get podcasts, Apple Podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, IGTV. Find us on there, YouTube. We got everything loaded up there. Stanley, Marcus, thank you so much, guys. Thank, thank you, you, bro. Appreciate you. Forks drums. <laughs>